What's happening guys and welcome to Arsenal Crew. Today we are talking about the 2-0 loss against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. Very, very disappointing um, result for us. Before we get on to the red cards, let's talk about before the red cards. And before the red cards, we were very, very, very good. Um, we were creating a lot of chances and we were dominating them. We were all over them. They literally had no chances. And I just felt that if we had carried on doing that for the rest of the game, we would have won it comfortably. But the red card did happen. But let's talk about the incident between Cossioni and Diego Costa, which led to the sort of ignite, ignition of the massive sort of, I don't know, fight whatever it was, um, Diego Costa, he should have been sent off. I'm not saying this as an Arsenal fan. I'm saying this is, by the letter of the law, he should have been sent off. If you watch that, he grabbed Cossioni's face with both hands, and then as Cossioni sort of took a step back, he swung his arm round and slapped him, and then... Um, Moments later, he chest bumped into him, resulting in Kossi only falling over. That which ignited the whole thing with Gabriel. Gabriel came in to get involved because Kossi only Diego Costa was sort of a bit squaring up a little bit. Then um, Diego Costa grabbed Gabriel by the neck. I think it was sort of around there. Scratched him just there. You can even see... On some of the camera angles, the scratch marks just after that incident had happened. If you look at um, a couple of, the, if you look for some of the highlights, I think they do show actually the scratch marks. They were just literally there, where literally he had just been grabbed and scratched straight down there. So I don't understand why he was only yellow carded. I think the referee made an appallingly bad decision on that front. He should have sent Diego Costa off for that. Yes, Gabriel, I understand that he why he was sent off. He did get a bit over the top, but what he what Gabriel did was no worse than what Costa did. And I think Costa was did worse things than Gabriel did. Gabriel, yes, he sort of squared up. He yes, he did push. Yes, he did sort of back heel kick Diego Costa in the shin but how is that any worse to what Diego Costa did I don't I don't understand but one thing I'd like to take from a form of positive if you can take a positive from that moment in time was that I was actually pleased with Gabriel and it sh we we've been lacking someone that will actually fight. And a previous video, I know I said about we need to ha show more fight in our play and the players need to fight for each other. I think it was the Newcastle game. And Gabriel literally showed that in that moment in time. Cossielny was sort of in trouble a bit, getting squared up by Diego Costa. And Gabriel was running over there and sticking up for him. And Gabriel was pretty much fighting back. And I like to see that. Yes, he did take it a little bit too far. He should have maybe not kicked. He should have been, once he was yellow carded, that should have been it. But, oh, actually, I missed out a step that also happened in that. When um, Diego Costa sort of came over and sort of patted Gabriel on the back. I say patted in quite a loosely framed thing. It was... Probably enough to say it was a nice pat, but it was a bit of a quite a hard pat on the back. Then Gabriel, quite funnily, um, sort of did quite a hard pat on his, uh, Costa's chest. Then uh, Costa hit Gabriel, and then obviously that led on to Gabriel kicking um, Costa. So. I don't understand why Costa was not sent off. I don't know, but it's happened. Let's move on to after that red card. Second half. We were doing very well still with 
only 10 men, we still were doing very, very well. But it came to the free kick. They had a free kick, and Monreal let, let Zuma go. It was all down to Monreal. Monreal did not follow his man. He completely lost Zuma. He was caught ball watching. He got drawn in, and Zuma had an easy header, and that's just literally it. It was poor defending at a set piece. And it seems to be a problem with us at the moment. We seem to be conceding goals at set pieces. In the Champions League game um, this week, we conceded at a corner. This week, we conceded at a free kick. Goals that we should not be conceding to call ourselves realistic title challengers. But I don't know. We just need to work on that for the Tottenham Hotspur game, which is the next game. There's no hiding place in that game. The fans, me, you, we are not taking another loss. We've had two losses in a row and that is already unacceptable. So we need another win in the next game. So hopefully the team will tighten up defensively on free kicks and set pieces. But I'm not holding my breath because it seems to be a constant problem with Arsenal for as long as I can remember really in recent years it has always been a problem set pieces with Arsenal but we conceded a set piece again then Gazzola got a second yellow card also got sent off put us down to nine men it was I don't understand that it, he his first yellow card was a bit well his first yellow card I think actually was worthy of a yellow card maybe you could argue a little bit but it was the second one was a little bit dodgy i'm unsure completely if um the referee like actually properly saw it because on in real time you can't really tell who got to the ball first out of Cesc Fabregas and Santi Cazorla. They look they look like they both hit the ball at the exact same time. But if you had slowed the footage down, you could see that Cesc Fabregas did get to it minusculely first. But there's no possible way for the referee, the position that he was in, and the speed that it happened, for him to actually see that. So I don't really think that he actually did see that. Yes, he can say that that was a good decision by him because Fabregas did get to it very, very... Um, well, just before Santi Cazorla. But did the referee really see that? I'm unsure about that. And the referee, he had an appalling game. The amount of wrong decisions he was making and Diego Costa, even after the whole Gabriel Cossioni thing, I, I think he either pushed or whatever Oxlade Chamberlain later on in the game, just before um, Costa got taken off, when Oxlade Chamberlain wasn't even on the ball. So I don't understand why he wasn't booked for that. Like I don't see why. What was the referee thinking about sending our players off when Diego Costa is doing this on the pitch? Because Santi Gazzola. His red card was, I still think, a little bit harsh compared to what Diego Costa was doing the whole game. He was pushing, he was slapping, he was hitting, he was scratching. He was doing everything that warrants either a straight red card or another yellow. But the ref wasn't, wasn't doing it. I don't know why, but he just wasn't. Why wasn't he sending Diego Costa off? And... Apparently, Arsene Wenger is um, uh, asking the FA to ban Diego Costa for the antics that he did do on the pitch. And I hope that he does succeed in that because Diego Costa should deserve to be suspended for the same amount of time as Gabriel. Because Gabriel didn't do anything worse, more worse than Diego Costa. And Santi Cazorla 
Fun fact for you guys, that was Santi Cazorla's first ever red card in a league game in any of his professional teams that he's ever played for. He's never been red carded in a league game for all of his teams. So that shows that his discipline has been very, very good for his entire career. But unlucky that he did get that red card and unlucky that we did lose because if we had kept 11 men on the pitch, I strongly believe that we would have won that game comfortably. Maybe two, probably 2-0, two I personally think, like they did with us. But it was unlucky that we did um, lose, lo lose the game and lose those two players. But hopefully Diego Costa will be suspended because he deserves it. He deserves to be suspended. And I put this out on Twitter when... When the whole incident with Gabriel, I'm going back to that now. When the whole incident with Gabriel, Diego Costa happened. I said, if I was on the pitch right now in the second half, I would do my utmost to really, really wind up Diego Costa. Because he was vulnerable at that time. You could just sort of wind him up. Maybe leave your leg in a little bit if you weren't on a yellow card. Don't do a really severely like bad challenge, but just slightly leave your leg in, trip him up maybe, sort of maybe if you could defend in a corner, give him a good shove, give him that, just push him back, and he would have he would have taken the bait so easily in that game, but like I've said, Arsenal players they're too nice. Apart from Gabriel in that game, I'm actually proud of Gabriel. For what he did. Not really the kick. But the sticking up for um, Koscielny. I'm proud of him for that. But we still lost. And other bad news that have come out from that game. Coquelin. He got taken off at half time. He got a slight injury in the first half. Got taken off at half time. Replaced by Callum Chambers. And it turns out apparently he has got an injury. And he is a strong doubt for the Tottenham game. So it looks like Arteta or Flamini will be playing in the Tottenham game. You can make of that whatever you like, guys. But Tottenham game next. Hopefully we can get the win. Because like I said, two games on the trot losing is already unacceptable for Arsenal. Three games losing, that is beyond unacceptable. That is diabolical. So hopefully we will win and we'll get our season back underway. And also hopefully Diego Costa will be suspended. But thanks guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe to Arsenal Crew. Like the video. Follow me on all my social medias. Links to that will all be in the description below. And thanks guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.